Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Dewey Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Dewey Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 37 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 38 in the RSV. A psalm for David, for a remembrance of the Sabbath. In other words, to help us remember certain things on the Sabbath. This is important to understand because the things being remembered in this psalm are mostly our own sins and misfortunes. Rebuke me not, O Lord, in thy indignation, nor chastise me in thy wrath. For thy arrows are fastened in me, and thy hand hath been strong upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of thy wrath. There is no peace for my bones because of my sins, for my iniquities are gone over my head and as a heavy burden are become heavy upon me. My sores are putrefied and corrupted because of my foolishness. I am become miserable, and am bowed down even to the end. I walked sorrowful all the day long. The heavy symbolism in these verses means that because of our sins against God, we've experienced great suffering and misery. These things weigh heavy upon us, though whether they refer to being physically punished or to being racked with guilt over the evil things we've done is unclear from these verses. So it could mean either one or both. For my loins are filled with illusions, and there is no health in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I roared with the groaning of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hidden from thee. I have tremendous desires which can't be fulfilled by anyone in the world. I'm obsessed with acquiring things I can only imagine, emotionally and perhaps even sexually obsessed, the word loin seems to imply this, and it makes me miserable. However, God is aware of all of this. None of my secret wishes or desires are secret from God. My heart is troubled, my strength hath left me, and the light of my eyes itself is not with me. I'm incredibly worried, exhausted, and depressed. My friends and my neighbors have drawn near and stood against me. And they that were near me stood afar off, and they that sought my soul used violence, and they that sought evils to me spoke vain things and studied deceits all the day long. Even people I trusted have betrayed me and become my enemies, practicing lies and deception, and tempting me to do evil through deceit and violence. But I as a deaf man heard not, and as a dumb man not opening his mouth. And I became as a man that heareth not, and that hath no reproofs in his mouth. David seems to be saying that he didn't understand many things going on around him and didn't say any evil against his fellow man. For in thee, O Lord, have I hoped. Thou wilt hear me, O Lord my God, for I said, lest at any time my enemies rejoice over me, and whilst my feet are moved, they speak great things against me. As long as evildoers think they have some influence over the actions or fate of King David, they tend to celebrate and make threats, but because he placed his hope in God, he knows he'll be heard. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, and I will think for my sin. We are willing to suffer pains in exchange for our sins, and we do definitely suffer in life. Some of our sufferings, in fact, are because we reflect on the sins we've committed, which is helpful for our spiritual and moral growth, but isn't a pleasant experience at all. But my enemies live, and are stronger than I, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. It seems like there are always lots of terrible people with great power trying to do us harm. They that render evil for good have detracted me, because I followed goodness. Evildoers will hate us and lie about us precisely because we do the right thing. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, do not thou depart from me. Attend unto my help, O Lord, the God of my salvation. Finally, the psalm ends with a plea for help from God. David recognizes that only the help of God can really offer him any significant protection, in this life or any life. Without God, we can't accomplish anything. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.